apologies that I'm not able to present to you in, uh, in French. Um, I'm afraid I'll have to speak uh, in, in English, but uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow things uh, reasonably easily today. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Pacific Tourism Data Initiative, which myself and my team at NZTRI uh, are run uh, with funding from MFAT and from a number of other organisations. Um, I'm also going to then link that, obviously, to the themes that we're discussing today, which are the, the blue economy and how can we, we link tourism more effectively into the blue economy and make sure that the blue economy is really benefiting from what tourism uh, can offer. Just a quick bit of background, uh, the Pacific Tourism Data Initiative um, covers uh, 10 Pacific Island countries. Uh, at the moment, it, it really began in the Cook Islands um, uh, back in 2012 and has gradually expanded. Uh, and you can see the range of countries that we cover at the moment. Um, some of those are funded through the New Zealand uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and I want to uh, acknowledge their support. Other destinations like the Cook Islands and Papua New Guinea uh, fund their own uh, program of, of work. The Pacific Tourism Data Initiative really revolves around three dimensions. The visitor dimension, uh, the International Visitor Survey, uh, business dimension, which involves business confidence index and business uh, surveys, and also something which uh, Riyadh alluded to, uh, which is very important. We need to get an understanding of community awareness and, and attitudes as well. So in two destinations, the Cook Islands and Niue, we're working on that at the moment and we're looking to expand that as time goes on. These three dimensions come together to provide us with a tourism decision support system that can help us plan, manage and develop the industry and can also have real uh, benefits and links to other areas of research and, and development, environmental, economic, ecosystem, for example. The work is really designed to help us um, understand how we can have an evidence-based approach to deciding which path we're going to follow uh, for tourism in the future. Obviously, you're all familiar with the reimagination, resetting, regeneration of tourism, lots of discussion about building back better. Within all of those discussions, the blue economy is seen as very critical. My concern is, I guess, and I think the concern of many people is that because past behaviour predicts future behaviour, we run the risk of talking a lot about these things, but perhaps still returning to the over-tourism and unsustainable practices that we often did see in, in the Pacific and elsewhere around the world. If we want to avoid going back to that, if we really do want to move forward, it's pretty critical that we have evidence and good data to allow us to monitor the industry's tourism's performance as it moves forward, as borders reopen, etc. And it's also really essential that we have this data so that we can be sure that we're not just simply pouring old wine into new bottles. I want to talk a little bit about how the Pacific Tourism Data Initiative can enable us to have this evidence base. And I'm just going to give you a few examples as we move through from the Cook Islands and also a little bit from, uh, from Niue. Um, the first area where the Pacific Tourism Data Initiative has been very valuable is in helping us to actually understand the value of marine resources to tourism and also in allowing us to guide investment by government or by business into different types of activities that can perhaps most easily fit within the sustainable development goals that are so much associated with uh, blue economy development. I've just got a couple of examples here. Uh, the first one is from the Cook Islands IBS. This has now been running for 10 years. It just shows you over time the types of, some of the types of marine tourism activities that have been undertaken. Some stand up paddle boarding have grown quite considerably over, over the time period. Others, for example, swimming, snorkeling, uh, have remained fairly consistent. This gives us a bit of a picture of the kinds of marine resources that visitors are participating in. We can also understand their satisfaction with those resources. 
But we can go one step further, and this is work that we helped uh, or that we provided for a Cook Islands Marine Ecosystem Services Evaluation or Valuation Study. Um, using our IVS data from 2019 to 20, we actually looked at visitors based around the number of marine activities that they undertake. So we segmented these visitors into three groups. Uh, those that do two or less marine activities, so that could be just, say, having a swim and maybe a paddle on a kayak, to those that actually engage more fully with the marine environment, maybe diving, uh, maybe snorkeling, swimming, doing a range of different things. What this work allows us to do, for example, is just highlight the value associated with having marine-oriented uh, visitors, visitors that are undertaking more of these kinds of activities and often activities that are going to be very much part of that blue economy mix. Uh, you can stay, stay longer, their prepaid spend flowing back to the economy is higher, their local spend is considerably higher, their overall impact in New Zealand dollars on the economy is also considerably higher. So this is great information to provide governments as they look to think about the kinds of strategies, market segments, et cetera, that they're going to pursue. This can reinforce the value of taking a blue economy approach. Another angle that we can use here is to help businesses as they decide whether to invest or not uh, in different locations. This is just an example from IBS data that we've produced from UA from 2017 to 20. It just shows you the difference between the New Zealand non-diver market and the New Zealand diver market. And again, what we're highlighting here is higher household income, higher impacts per visit. All of these things really uh, indicate to uh, businesses that this is a high value area to invest in. This has been really important in actually attracting New Zealand investment into the dive sector in UA. This IVS data has given them the information they need to perform due diligence and make good business investment decisions. And of course, the data that we gather from the IVS is not just about numbers and how much people spend. We also capture a lot of information of a qualitative nature, asking people to give their feedback on their visit. So you can see here a little quote from one of the visitors saying that they had had some challenges when diving because one of the available ramps for diving was also being used by local fisher people. This had led to some tension and led to some dives being missed. This kind of information can then be used by the industry and by government more generally to help inform new, new initiatives, new practices to work more closely with local community to reduce uh, tensions and, and problems that might arise. There are other things that we can look at here, including uh, what I would call environmental performance indicators. And this is where our visitor survey, our community and business surveys can really play a, ro a role in providing us with what we might call citizen or visitor science that can actually cost effectively give us good information that can be turned into and used as effective indicators. I just got an example here from the Cook Islands IVS. In that visitor survey, uh, we asked people to tell us about the things that they found least satisfying about their visit. It's an open-ended question. And we analyze that data to, to pull out the key themes that emerge. And you can see here that pretty much consistently for much of the period that we've run the IBS, visitors have said that uh, environmental degradation, uh, uh, rubbish, et cetera, is not a very major part of their uh, least uh, concerned uh, comments. So around about 9 to 10% of the comments that are made in this area tend to focus on environmental issues. But you can see that it's on two occasions, back in 2016-17 uh, and, and also in 2015-16, we had uh, major algal blooms that occurred in the Murray Lagoon of Rarotonga. That led to a real upturn in visitor criticism and comment about environmental quality. We could use that data to inform government to show that this was a concern and obviously strengthen concerns that business and community were raising. And this allowed government to introduce policies and approaches that could begin to mitigate some of these challenges. Plus, of course, there were just natural processes that meant perhaps that those algal blooms didn't come back as often. 
We did start to see again a, another rise here when visitor numbers to the Cook Islands were reaching what, what we would call, I guess, an over-tourism stage. So this kind of information allows us to map out and test what kind of uh, visitor feedback we are getting uh, on the environment. So if you like visitor science. You can also see here that our data can be used to help us understand who these visitors were that were complaining about the algal bloom, the, the, the damage to this particular in marine environment. You can see that these visitors were almost twice as likely to be repeat visitors. They also had higher income and local spend than those visitors that were not complaining about the algal bloom. So these were a high value visitor. This quote from someone that's already been six times to Rarotonga saying they will not come back unless this problem is solved and cleaned up. So this is really powerful information to encourage government to take blue economy and blue economy management very seriously. But we can also bring in other dimensions, for example, business perspectives. This is from our ongoing business confidence and business survey that we run in the Cook Islands every six months. Uh, in the last few years, we've only run it annually because of border closures, etc. You can see that during the time of the algal bloom, environment, environmental and climate change issues were seen to be some of the most pressing challenges that were facing business. This dropped down again, it rose again, just like it did for visitors during this period of over-tourism, but since COVID, it's disappeared. So there's an important message here, I think, if we're talking about the blue economy, if we're talking about sustainable development initiatives, you can see that for many businesses, environment has been a concern in the Cook Islands and environmental quality, especially of the marine environment. But as soon as COVID hits, as soon as those challenges of just staying alive as a business hit, your focus on the environment diminishes. Now, that could also be driven by the fact that there are fewer visitor numbers, of course. But the bottom, mess bottom line, I think, here is the message that businesses will not always be as keen to think about those environmental di dimensions, especially if they bring costs in terms of mitigation uh, when we're dealing with a period of crisis like we have seen. So that's another important factor we have to keep in mind. Of course, there's also the community dimension, which is so critical. We have to focus on community as the centerpiece for any analysis of tourism performance, how much income, employment it is generating, but also what impact it is having on community well-being. Now, we have run four national community surveys uh, in the Cook Islands uh, before COVID and two since uh, COVID uh, struck. And this is giving us the start of a really good time series on to show how, com how visitors, uh, sorry, how communities feel about tourism. Now, this is just a, a section of that. It's a, it's a, a five-point Likert scale. I've just highlighted one theme here, which is our environment is damaged because of tourism. You can see that agreement levels from community were rising during this period of visitor growth up to 2019. With the closure of borders, with the slow return of tourism, uh, we have seen that damage associated with tourism actually beginning to decline. But we can map out many different dimensions of environmental reactions and, and feelings on the part of community, we can begin to understand much more clearly uh, the impacts of tourism on community well-being. So I just wanted to give you a quick snapshot, I think, of the way in which different data, different resources, especially data that's collected cost-effectively and over time in a robust fashion, can give us time series insights into some of the challenges that we are going to face as we turn towards a more sustainable, uh, uh, reimagined, uh, blue economy focused tourism. Um, if we don't want to go back to the way things were, we have to look at data, we have to develop indicators, we have to think of cost effective ways that we can understand the way in which tourism is performing. Uh, this website just gives you a link to the uh, country pages um, where you can find reports and uh, data from the work. Um, the work is ongoing. It, it runs for another couple of years. It's already um, in its second phase now. So we are now in year four, I think, of, of six, year five, I think, of six, actually. 
Um, so there's plenty more to be done and there's plenty from the past that you can also have a look at. Nga uh, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, again, apologies that I can't uh, present to you in French, but I hope you were able to get a good feel for uh, the themes that I was trying to, uh, to raise there. So uh, thank you very much.